What is up, you guys? Welcome to Word First Radio, the podcast brought to you by Word First Ministries. I am your host, Jacob O'Neill. And as always, I'm joined by my friends, Cameron and Bailey. And today we have Pastor Bill Onestad. How are you? I'm wonderful. (laughs) Happy to be here. Bill is Cam's dad. Yeah. Still. (laughs) 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 I don't know what to say. (laughs) This is true. It's true, the thing he said. Right. (laughs) Bailey, uh, why don't you go ahead and pray us in? Yeah. God Almighty, thank you for delivering the Honestad safely to us. Um, And thank you just for the time that we've had to spend with them. Um, I pray that you would bless this conversation that we have, that we would um, hear and talk about the questions that are residing at home and that people are asking, um, and that we would be able to answer some of those questions um, Lord, I just pray that you'd be with us in this conversation, guide us, give us wisdom, make this time useful for you and your kingdom. We ask in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bailey. All right. So pastor Bill, I've, I've been calling you pastor Bill for nine Since years. I've known you. So yeah. I'm just going to keep, uh, keep up with that same theme. But, uh, so, uh, we haven't seen you in a while. At least most of us haven't. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen you. We've been in Norway for, I guess, uh, going on nine months mm-hmm. now, and uh, that's been the longest time in my life that I have <laughs> gone without seeing you. So, yeah, I hope uh, hope you enjoyed I mean, that. Apart from the first like sixteen, 16 years, years yeah. when you weren't my dad, <laughs> <laughs> since I've known you, that anyway, hard for you having not seen him for that long. It was difficult. The first thing I said when I saw him was that I was happy to see him. So, <laughs> anyway, and he quivered just a little. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, why don't you, uh, for people who don't know you uh, or have never met you before, just tell us a little bit about yourself. And I'll fact check you. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Bill. Missing context. <laughs> <laughs> I am Cameron's father mm-hmm. and the executive pastor at, at Orchard Christian Church in Temecula. Mm. Where we met, yeah, yes, mm-hmm. yeah. some number of years, ten years ago, approximately. Almost, yeah. I was telling Cam, it was like, dude, we've known each other for I think like nine, ten years now. It's getting which there, is, yeah. Uh, that's pretty crazy, yeah. yeah. So uh, we've known each other for about the same amount of length. Yeah. Uh, this is, I believe, um, Cam talks about a lot on the podcast about how he has Norwegian roots and Norwegian heritage mm-hmm. and his Norwegian last name. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are uh, just so happen to be a part of that lineage of Norwegians. Is this your first time visiting Norway? This is my first time in Norway. And as, as my initial impressions were mixed. On the one hand, I remember a story from my father and my uncle uh, when they visited Norway and their disappointment mm. because they'd heard stories from their parents about the town of Onishtad mm-hmm. mm. and that it was a lush valley where farming occurred between two majestic mountains and as they built up this scene and my father and his brother, my uncle, visited the town and it was reduced to a sign on a stand in a small little farm mm. and it didn't live up to their expectations. So on the one hand, I was I was ready for some disappointment, mm. but when I got here, I was pleasantly surprised. Everything everything feels normal to me. Like this is the way life should be lived. Mm. Mm. The weather is weather that I prefer. I like it a little mm. bit chilly, and I'm a natural introvert. And people here naturally leave me alone. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if people listening to the podcast realize this or not, but in, in Oslo, public tra- transportation is a way to get around. Right. Mm-hmm. Most people don't own a car. And when you get on a train or a bus, the seats are assembled in rows of three, and no one ever sits in the middle th- middle seat. Yeah, no. it's mm-hmm. kind of socially taboo to sit next to somebody you don't know, mm-hmm. which I yeah. love. All the buses are half full. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, if, what if cha- if chairs are facing each other, like yeah. two chairs here, two chairs here, they'll, they'll sit, sit diagonally. diagonally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I learned like in the eighties when you when you travel, if I if I'm gonna fly, always carry a book, even if you don't read it. Carry a book so the person sitting next to you knows that you're reading, and that's an unspoken mm-hmm. hint to not talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I always had a book because I don't want to I visit like that. Him. Yeah, <laughs> and I still got the guy who sat down to me that sat, sat down next to me every single time and didn't have enough social sensitivity to not touch me or not talk to me. Mm-hmm. They'd want to have a conversation, but Norwegians don't, 
and I'm so pleased mm. about that. Yeah. <laughs> I love Norway. People don't talk to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, real quick, is I'm gonna I'm not. I was gonna say fact check. That's not. So maybe your your hopes were dashed a little bit, or your expectations were dashed when we got to Ol Nista. Um, but I never really heard that story growing up, so you must have sort of spared me from it. But Ol is like a. It's like a part of town in this farming city right near the coast so it's really beautiful and it's not really just like a a sign on a a sign on a stick or whatever Mm. it's a place where people live and they still farm and people have the same name as us and not all of us are related but at least some of us are Mm -hmm. and it's right on the like the beautiful it's not a valley it's not like there's farmland and ocean it's Mm. crazy yeah i (laughs) never thought geography worked that way but it is it's like Mm. farms onto the beach but it's anyways, it's still really beautiful, and I don't know if we if you'd call it. I guess it's lush, but it's wintertime. So is anything lush in Norway in the wintertime? I'm pretty uh, lush. Yeah, We're well, the I mean, apart from you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it still was. I thought it was. Uh, I, it was wonderful. I loved it. it was, yeah, it was fantastic. It, so it's not mm. a, it's not a sign on a stick, but it definitely isn't between <laughs> two mountains. Yeah. Well, so why don't we talk about that experience uh, real quick? So you visited Onasta, mm-hmm. and uh, you were. Uh, not disappointed, I guess, yeah. right? Undisappointed. Yeah. Unre. <laughs> unsupported. Unre. Unsupported. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, that, thank you for that, Cam. <laughs> no, I'm glad to help. So, uh, what did you see? Did you just look at the farm? Did you meet anybody? Like, how, wh- what was that experience like? What did you First, do? First, Cameron has a, a friend in town who invited us to meet his family. And so we met family. Mm hmm. And they're they're related to us maternally, not paternally. Mm-hmm. So although the last name is Onestad, they get the last name because they lived in that they live in the area. Yeah, ah. not because we have DNA and mater, paternal DNA in common. Right. Huh. But on our, on the mother on our mother's side, on our maternal Onestad side, we have uh, re, we have relationship, and we met them for a wonderful wonderful Norwegian meal mm-hmm. in a Norwegian home, mm-hmm. and my wife wept mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it was so familiar. Yeah, because I love the furniture. I love the colors. I love the decoration. Now I understand why my father always had a mirror in the entryway. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you get in the entryway, you take your jacket off, you take your shoes off, and you check your hair because you take mm-hmm. your, your head thing. And she goes, "All of this makes sense." Yeah, it was like little fireworks going off. Where she goes, "That's why they did this," and mm-hmm. the uh, mm-hmm. and the candles and the decor and everything kind of fell into place. And they decorated their home the way she likes to, mm-hmm. up, up to and including these little wooden angels on their bookshelf with like wire wings. Yeah. So, like, did you see these? She's like, oh, I know. <laughs> and we ate a meal that we'd never had before and it seemed so familiar uh-huh. wow. and the people were wonderful and warm and loving and hospitable and at some point somebody mentioned that maybe we should go to the farm mm-hmm. am I getting my chronology mixed up chronology is a little bit a little bit messed around but that's okay There's, we we'd wanted mm-hmm. to go and visit the farm so this, yeah. this same family had looked up who we were actually related to in town and it's one of their one of their neighbors because it went, so everyone there has the same last name sure but it was one of the neighbors, and then all, and yeah. so we got to the farm, and in the, we we met with the family. One of the men stood in the driveway and kind of motioned to us, "Come this way," and we had what they call a yard house. I think that's what they called it. I don't remember. Mom will remember the name, but yeah, it was a thirty foot by twenty foot room uh, where they gathered the family they've mm-hmm. come meet with us we've gathered the family yeah they, mm-hmm. they, they had heard that we were coming so some number of people in town had like warned them about us mm-hmm. and they said we'll gather the family and we got there and a bunch of family were oh there. wow yeah. so <laughs> we shook hands and tried to learn each other's names and it turns out one of the hosts had been they'd been actually rehearsing our names so they knew how to say them we could remember who was who mm-hmm. I, I didn't show them the same courtesy i'd never met them before yeah. but we got into the, into the little room and the on the table was a picture book uh what photo photo album photo mm-hmm. album yeah. opened to a particular picture and i looked at it and i said that's my uncle alf hmm. and that 94 year old grandpa was in the room <laughs> and one of them said you know who is that i said my uncle alf and he said oh yeah alf mm-hmm. it, turns, it was not my uncle it's my great uncle it's my dad's mm-hmm. uncle but i recognized him several years ago he showed up to the farm unannounced wow. and <laughs> said, I think we're related. I'm yeah. Ulf. Mm. <laughs> That's so great. And next to the photo album was a, a book of genealogy. And we opened it up and I found my grandfather. 
And I got all, that's my grandfather. And then I saw my dad. <laughs> then I saw me. Mm-hmm. And then Cameron says, and that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. It was in a Norwegian genealogy book that they had put together for um, uh, for a man in the family for his 100th birthday. I think mm. that's the story. So they put together a genealogy of everyone who's related to him. And this was in like 1996. Wow. And it's all in Norwegian. And it starts with a letter that he had written home in 1934 or something. And you, you flip through the pages. And there's great grandpa. And there's grandpa. And there's my dad. And there's me and my brothers with our birth mm. dates and locations <laughs> oh, wow. as we yeah. see ourselves in his genealogy mm. book 94 year old grandpa just he just soul smiled mm-hmm. mm. is they're, they're pleased by that and so we had we had a nice coffee time together and met family yeah mm. on halfway around the world literally mm-hmm. yeah 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 we had an ancestor in common one of the sons came to the united states as a pastor one mm-hmm. of the sons stayed on the farm sure and that was the farm family, mm. and we were the United States and from the pastor family. A couple of days later, we returned to the farm mm-hmm. because in the year of COVID, mm. 2020, my father passed away. Mm-hmm. And because of the COVID restrictions, uh, we were unable to ever do a memorial service or a funeral for him. Mm-hmm. So, And if there's any man in my life that I've ever known who deserves a memorial service, it would be my father. Right. He's a man of high character and integrity, um, good, good man. And his memory was we never was never memorialized, mm-hmm. so we thought we'd bring some of his ashes uh, to the farm. So Cameron called and asked permission. They said we'd be honored if you sprinkle some of his ashes here. And outside the farm is a stone monument with a family name on it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we had held hands and did a small memorial service there, mm-hmm. and memorialized a very significant life in my in my family Mm -hmm. and left his ashes there by the monument Mm. and said a prayer yeah so it was meaningful Mm. yeah hopefully that honors grandpa and the family yeah yeah Yeah. no i think it does i think Mm. that that's that is really sweet that you got that opportunity i i wonder um just kind of thinking out loud about this experience i don't know um what thoughts you have about it but this kind of um feeling of like, so you've been in America your whole life, growing up there, mm-hmm. living there, building careers there and families there. Yeah. And then you come to a place you've never been to, meeting people you've never met and everyone acts like you. Mm-hmm. They have the same kind of pace as you. I don't blame that same. on them, but yeah. I still <laughs> it's, it's, this doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me that right. this is true, but it seems like it's genetic. Mm-hmm. I fit into yeah. this weather. I fit into the social mores. I like the food. Mm-hmm. It's... And and it's more than oh this this is appealing to me. It mm-hmm. seems like this is the way life is supposed to be lived. Yeah. And my family didn't raise me that way. Mm-hmm. And my father was was kind of an extrovert. Sure, but I so I don't, I don't understand it. But I, it just I it, it fit here. I've mm-hmm. described it to you guys. It's like I'm a black duck. And, and, I, yeah. and I've never seen any others. And then there's a whole family of them. I go, oh, my mm-hmm. gosh, there's more right. of us. Yeah. It kind of feels that way to me. So Norwegians, please don't be offended. I'm, I'm not asking you to claim You're me. trying to count yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I'm, like, yes. I'm not like, hey, and me too. Mm-hmm. Like the Kardashian mom or whatever. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm not, I, don't mean to do, I don't mean to do that. But there's something really familiar with the, the social expectations and, and even to the point of uh, like decor and mm-hmm. the, and the pace and the cadence and the way that we talk with one another, mm-hmm. it just feels really familiar and um, and comforting and lovely to me. And uh, you know, I, compared to the United States, where uh, I won't speak for you, Pop, but uh, it's easy to feel a little out of place, especially now, where it's like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm with my people, um, and I'm I'm sure as like compared to them, I'm weird, but I feel more at home among Norwegians so far than uh, than I do with. With mo- in most American situations, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it feels like cousins and family and and uh, Americans in general are they tend to think that Norwegians are a little bit weird. Like if you go to whatever, uh, what's the travel website? What's the travel website? Travelocity. Uh, it's not Travelocity. Yeah. Whatever the one. Travelsomewhere dot com. Travel something. Travel. Yeah. Go get out of here. Dot whatever. Yeah. Um, Didn't they sponsor this video? <laughs> yeah, they did. Speaking yeah. of that, <laughs> do you about want sponsor? to go to Greece? <laughs> get out of here. Dot whatever. <laughs> Um, but they'll tell you, so Americans who travel to Norway, they'll tell you, like, listen, Norwegians are kind of, they're, they're different than we are, and here's what that's like. And I got here and went, oh, my goodness, it's family. Like, yeah, I guess mm. Norwegians are different than we are, but it's really, to me, it, does, it doesn't stand out. To me, it, it feels mm-hmm. like home. And it's not because we, we look the same. I, I don't look at them and go, oh, you look, except one girl, at, at, when they gather mm. the family, one girl looked like a cousin. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's, it's like the way people behave. Mm-hmm. In America, it takes consider, considerable energy for me to be around people. Mm-hmm. When I'm around people, I go home exhausted. 
here there's not as much energy. I feel like I can be me and I'm just acting like everybody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just a fascinating experience for mm-hmm. me because I know like our experience coming to Norway doesn't Definitely really look no. anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love to hear about yours. What was your experience like? Yeah. Well, it's, it's not like it, there were just some, th- uh, some of the things that we had to not get used to, but just kind of like realize like some mm-hmm. of the differences. Mm-hmm. So kind of that slower pace kind of thing. Mm-hmm. America is such a huge melting pot. It was born is born as a melting pot that country. And so there's obviously cultural diversity here, but Norway is less of a melting pot. Mm-hmm. Like Norwegians still pretty much act like Norwegians. Yeah. And so we uh, uh I don't know when if you ever had this moment, but the light bulb really kind of went on in my head when we had this meeting with a woman named Moira. Mm. And she, so she's a mm. Scottish lady who's been married to a Norwegian for 45 years. I want to eventually get her on the podcast, yeah. by the way. There's a little teaser for uh, an upcoming <laughs> episode. But um, uh, I, I want to eventually ha- have her on. Uh, but she explained to us some of the differences, some of the oddities, I mm-hmm. guess, for, at least from an American or British, Scottish perspective. Whatever. Right? You can't um, say white people because Norway is just more white people. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. And so one of the things, and this is uh, 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 something we haven't yet talked about on the podcast, but like a lot, of, I've heard from a lot of foreigners when they come over, if you open a door for a Norwegian, mm-hmm. they just walk straight in, mm-hmm. do not acknowledge your existence. And they're not being mm-hmm. rude. That's just part of uh, their cultural fabric. It's just mm-hmm. who they are. It's just like, that's just the normal thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's like, don't say, don't acknowledge this person. I don't want to be rude and, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. And one of them was uh, another kind of oddity that kind of really was relevant for us was she was like, if you want to meet your neighbors, you go and knock on the door and ask to borrow an egg. That way uh, you feel obligated to bring an egg back and then you get to meet mm-hmm. them twice there. And so me thinking, what would be more polite was I inconvenienced my neighbor for one egg. Mm -hmm. Now I'll bring back four eggs to go Mm -hmm. above and beyond and, you know, make Mm -hmm. up for the one egg. Mm -hmm. And she immediately said, Mm -hmm. stop. No, no, no. Don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) She was like that, Mm -hmm. but she was like, don't do that because if you bring back four eggs, if they give you one, they'll feel guilty. Mm -hmm. And I was like, like, yeah, like there's an imbalance. Like Mm -hmm. they owe you. (laughs) I was like, really? And, and so there are some things like that, that, um, we talked about in an earlier episode when we had Benta on Mm -hmm. about some of these differences and neither of them are right or wrong and no no one means any, uh, I think we mean all the same stuff by by our, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we express the uh, very similar values in the way that we treat one another, but the way they work themselves out is really strange. Like, you don't, you don't want anyone to owe you anything. So, uh, so this is how we handle it in in an American context and in Norway, they handle it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, maybe oppositely, but are expressing the same, the same value, which is you don't owe me anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'd say so. Like for us, I think our experience has been mainly like that. Like we're experiencing the culture and recognizing that things are oddities mm-hmm. to us that aren't oddities to the culture here. Um, but like, I think it's cool hearing your story because um, it reminds me a lot of like when you talk about your first trip here mm-hmm. and like just the feeling of you got off the plane and your feet hit the floor and you're like. This is like this is what home mm-hmm. that the um, yeah. black duck or whatever the <laughs> thing you just talked about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like, I think it's a unique, I don't know, thing that God's doing behind the scenes. Like mm. you, like Jake talked about at the beginning, you uh, reference your Norwegian heritage and like mm-hmm. um, it. In one sense, it seems like God's preserved this um, remnant. Yeah. of his Christian pastors like mm-hmm. in America and then is sending one of them back here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's probably like a special, like, and I'm willing to say like a blessing and like a plan of God mm-hmm. um, that you guys are like eating the fruit of, like mm-hmm. you're experiencing the blessing of feeling at home mm-hmm. when you come here. Cause I definitely like, I don't not feel welcome, mm-hmm. but I don't have the feeling of like, Oh, this is how things like, oh, should my be. My people. Yeah. yeah. Right. You couldn't find a banana tree to swing from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My thoughts exactly. <laughs> I kick my shoes off when we get in the door and then I feel at home. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So um, like none of that, but I think it's uh, like really special to hear like those little, how those oddities to you stand out as um, 
Comforting. things that are yeah, comforting <laughs> yeah. oddities. Yeah. Like you're like, why haven't I been living this way the whole time? Like, yeah. Why don't my people yeah, do I, this at home? I mean, one of the most pronounced cultural norms mm-hmm. is a lack of self-assertion here. Mm-hmm. It's kind of yes. it seems socially taboo to assert oneself, mm-hmm. and in America. Everybody asserts themselves. Mm-hmm. I got to go first, yeah. and right. so I expect all of you to consider me and accommodate me. And <laughs> in Norway, I don't want any. I, I want to be invisible to you. I'll, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. take care of myself. Yeah. I'm self reliant, and I, I want to behave in a way that you won't even know I'm here. Mm-hmm. And in America, I demand you know I'm here, and yeah. you you care for me. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny you mentioned that because that <clears throat> is, was actually another one of the things that Moira was talking about, mm-hmm. and really that experience, kind of like I said earlier, was like. She was speaking into like our experience of being here for like six months at that point. And then it was like a light bulb that going mm. off. It was like, oh, that's why this Norwegian did this. Mm. And so why that's relevant to what you just said is I, uh, I can think of a f- couple times when I was in meeting with a Norwegian talking about ministry or something. And I asserted myself in a way that would not have been necessarily inappropriate mm. or necessarily arrogant where we come from. Mm-hmm. But Thinking back after mm-hmm. that conversation with Moira, I was like, you know what? He did kind of have like a look on his face that was like, mm. oh, that was a little arrogant. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I was, I, and to me, it was like, yeah. I wasn't being arrogant at all. And it's not because the person I'm talking to is weird. It's just because it's a, it's a cultural thing. There yeah. was a little bit of a clash of culture there. Mm. And now it makes sense mm. after speaking to you guys and talking to Moira. I was like, oh, I, I get it. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be arrogant, but yeah, I, sure. I can see how. Mm it would be because of the culture. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I'm, it, it makes my heart happy to hear that you got mm. to have those experiences and honor your father like that. I mm. think that, uh, I think he would have been proud and I, I'm happy that you got that experience here instead of just it, it, when you were talking about it, I was thinking back to, uh, our first experiences in Norway, kind of uh, as missionaries as well, but in our free time, kind of as tourists. Like, mm. okay, we did a cruise and we went sightseeing and we saw a couple, you know, museums. Um, but when I hear you describe it, it's exactly kind of the way you guys put it. Like, if it, we're with family, mm. like we're mm. family that we've never met, and now we get to fellowship with them for a couple yeah. hours, mm. and that's a uh, very different from my experience. But I mean, it's an ex- it's a profound and extreme blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet. Awesome. Well, I thank you so much for speaking into that. Uh, One of the things that uh, we're particularly excited uh, uh, that you're here for is that you actually are a pastor at the church. We just came from the church. I I spent almost 10 years at Mm -hmm. Cameron as well. And Bailey quite a few years and was on staff there. Mm -hmm. Um, And so uh, we love our church family back in the United Mm. States. Yes, we do. We Mm -hmm. all kind of spuriously have gotten random messages and, you know, tagged in a couple posts of Mm -hmm. like people who ask us questions, but we don't really know. uh, What we're wondering is, what do the people back at the orchard yeah. want to know about yeah, us like the here? First, the first representative of the <laughs> mm. orchard that's come, that's come right. to, well, uh, uh, Mama Grace came, but you're the first one who's come since we've had a podcast mm. and we can sort of mm. talk to and hopefully be a bit of an ambassador back to our church family yeah. about mm. what's going well, on here. I may be in a perfect position to be that ambassador because yeah. people still think about you often. Mm. Oh, good. And regularly, like at least weekly, sometimes multiple times a week, people mm. ask me questions about you as individuals and you mm. as a ministry team. And I don't have those answers. Oh. So <laughs> I refer them to the podcast or I say, well, I'll talk to Cam and I'll, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, maybe we could talk about some of those. Yeah. And then when I go home and people ask me those questions, I'll be well informed. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you can just share this video too yeah. when you're. Uh, there you, <laughs> go. you can like, share, and subscribe. You ever thought about that? <laughs> <laughs> you thought about ringing that bell? Dad? Sign up for our Patreon. <laughs> so, uh, j- just real quick, uh, uh, if you had a couple questions already written down, maybe somewhere in this room, uh, or just off the top of your head, what are some of the things that people are asking about us? So, I think about the most common questions. One of the most common questions would be, well, the the, the it's a pair of questions that's, that's almost always attached. And that is, is the mission completed yet? Mm-hmm. And when are they coming home? I hear, hear that often. Well, we're all looking why, don't we, well, <laughs> why don't one of you boys uh, take that? Yeah, I mean, the no, the mission is not completed yet. Um, I don't think it would be even appropriate to put an end date on the no. mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the, the mission is plant churches that plant churches that plant mm-hmm. churches. So 
the yeah. mission is intended to far outlive us anyways. <laughs> mm-hmm. So when Jesus comes back, that's yeah. when the mission is complete. <laughs> I think in, in American Christendom, mm-hmm. it's, it's more common for churches to send a mission, a missionary to a temporary mission right. mm-hmm. activity. Like we're, we're going to go serve in an orphanage for a month or we're mm-hmm. going to, we're going to build a something building and we're going to mm-hmm. add a wing to this church in South America or something. Yeah. And you send people out for a couple of weeks with some building materials and they do some construction work right. and love on the people who live there and then come back and mm-hmm. the mission is done. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I think there's a, a misunderstanding at home that you are doing a temporary work. A temporary project. Yeah. Like project. Yeah. Yeah. When's the project yeah. going to be done? Yeah. So I'd say when slash if God calls us elsewhere, then the mission is done for uh, whoever God calls so, elsewhere. But you're not planning on coming back to Temecula. No, this, this is no. home. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless, yeah, unless God calls us back, like Bailey, you know, just said, we're not, we're not coming back. Yeah, we're home. Mm-hmm. So when are you coming this is home, home? You know, yeah. a couple of hours when we're done recording mm-hmm. this, we'll go, <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go to my home in Oslo. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's understandable. I can see where that question is coming from, mm-hmm. and we. Uh, out of the several meetings we had early on with, mm-hmm. you know, thinking, how are we going to get support? How are we going to present this? Uh, t- talked a very, you know, at length that this kind of mission looks very different than what you just described. Yeah. The, the other two missions that people sent us on to Norway mm-hmm. had an expiration date, had mm-hmm. a defined time when right. we were coming back. Yeah. And and what you said, the, the typical conception of missions. Mm-hmm. So I can understand totally where that um, question is coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that we've definitely been talking about on the last couple episodes is playing the long game. Mm. And for us, like the Norway is a uniquely secular place. We've been talking about that Mm -hmm. uh, on a couple episodes and it doesn't require like, if I came to Norway with the materials to build a well (laughs) for a village out Mm -hmm. here, that that's just the wrong tools for the mission. And so we're playing the long game in the sense that, the, the mission looks like planning churches, mm-hmm. developing pastors, evangelizing in a missional community mm-hmm. kind of context. And we've been explaining what that is over the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, and well, so the mission doesn't have a really defined end date. Th- that may and, segue yeah. right into the probably the third most common question, which sure. is what kind of things are they doing? Yeah. What, what are they doing to accomplish the mission? What, are, what do their days look like? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yes, well, they yeah. look different for all of us. So I'm a full-time staff member with the with the IMB, and so I have a supervisor to whom I report, uh, Zach, who lives here uh, in Oslo. And Whitney and I have our basket of things that we have to do, right? So Whitney and I, I think we've already completed our academic education, so we don't have to do that, but we are in full-time language school, so we go to language school four times uh, four times a week, Monday through Thursday. We go all morning to try and, and pick up some Norwegian. And so it's a high priority for us in the context of our employment to spend the next year or so really acquiring culture Mm -hmm. and language. And we've, we talked almost an entire episode about, um, about gospel fluency, learning Mm -hmm. language so that we can evangelize and people don't have to do the calculation in their mind between two languages. So that's a, that's a high priority for uh, for us. So Whitney and I are spending, um, maybe the, the majority of sort of our work time is in language and culture. And now lately, which we've spent a few episodes talking about, our opportunities for the stuff that looks like ministry have really ramped up. Mm-hmm. So we've joined uh, we've joined a church, which mm-hmm. is excellent, and we'll be uh, we'll be going there this week. I'm very excited about that. And we are we've been invited to take part in lots of opportunities. So Word First now is on the board of an important student program that uh, that uh, Log yeah, is I think I did that right <laughs> is is launching this fall and. Yeah, there's other stuff. I don't want to give too much away because it's still sure. it's still uh, sort of in the in the budding phase. And mm-hmm. we'll be talking about it. Yes, as well. it de- yeah, we definitely episodes. will share as, yeah. as stuff comes up. But we've been leading worship and we've been preaching and leading studies and taking various opportunities to do the things that look more like that look more like ministry now. And that's more or less our days. And then Whitney and I, of course, also we have a family. So our days look like taking the girls to school. So uh, so our family, you've seen, you've seen a few of our days. We get up pretty early. I do my, my Bible reading and my sort of daily morning stuff, and then we get the girls ready for school, and then we take the girls to school, and Cheery's big enough to go on her own, which is heartbreaking and mm. wonderful at the same time. <laughs> and then we go to language school, and we come home, and we study a little bit, and eventually the girls come home, and we have dinner, and we do sort of normal family things. And then in the context of... of um, 
uh, the overt, the obvious ministry, we're doing more and more of of those kinds of things. Where right now we're making partnerships and making friends and being welcomed into the into the Baptist Union and on and on those kinds of mm. things. Your guys' days look different than that. But I do want to say one thing before I before I kick it over to you, and that is it's like the what are you doing? What are you what are you doing over there? Is, is a um, not only legitimate question, it's like necessary because right. we mm-hmm. um, accountability is. Yeah. is important and it's really easy to overly spiritualize what you're doing in order to um, in order to shirk accountability but at the same time I know pop you can you can uh, you'll back me up on this uh, even as a pastor like if somebody said how do you how did you spend your day today mm-hmm. and I wrote you a list of what I did today like it doesn't look like a job <laughs> but mm-hmm. I, but I come <laughs> home whipped and exhausted and right. out of all spiritual and physical and mental energy. Because the because of what the job actually requires and demands, and I think what we are all up to looks a little bit like that. Mm-hmm. And also, if you if you um, if you reorient yourself about what the mission is, which is not uh, a temporary thing, like if they 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 went to build seventeen wells, what well are what number are they on? Sure, totally legitimate question, but that's not the, the, the that's not the job that we're doing. We're not building mm-hmm. seventeen wells. What we're doing is establishing, or we intend to do anyways, is to establish church planting churches and mm-hmm. raise up raise up leaders and pastors in order to turn the nation upside down and be a, be a missionary sending nation again. And so, um, like we talked about that, that job doesn't have necessarily like a, an obvious finish line. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's no, there's no, there's no obvious finish line in in our mind either. But if you have that in mind, that, that, that that is what we're doing, what we're up to, then it'll make sense of how we spend our days. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Well, I was actually about to start touching on that. And so, uh, one of the things that we've been commenting on um, on social media and mm-hmm. when we post about what we're doing and stuff is that the pace has really been picking up around mm-hmm. here in the last mm-hmm. couple months. And by that, I mean opportunities to lead worship, opportunities to evangelize, mm-hmm. opportunities to join a church, yeah. to partner with different churches, to plan evangelism events. And these are all different uh, things that we'll be talking about and how that actually works itself out. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I, if I play like devil's advocate for a mm. second, like it's just to analyze That's what the devil needs. The mission, right. An advocate. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll be good at this, Jacob. Jacob, go ahead and advocate for the devil. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just think about what you said. You know, yeah. sympathy for the devil. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if I... If I kind of step outside, I'm like and play advocate um, for the right. devil, <laughs> <laughs> a neutral party advocate. <laughs> it's like okay, am I? I'm I'm sending them money to go grocery shopping yeah. and to learn and to go to school. There, there's and some of learn. that that no one's ever been crass enough to mm-hmm. to ask the question sure. in that context. But I, I, I sense a little bit of that. I don't want to overwhelm you and make you feel bad. No, no, but maybe fine. a small portion of that is like. What are we paying for? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I can uh, per- speaking personally for myself. I would uh, feel very convicted, like in my spirit, mm-hmm. if we were here and not doing legitimate gospel work yeah. and li- and just merely getting yeah. degree, going to school for a degree, and going grocery shopping and just learning mm-hmm. a language. If that was all we were doing. I would like feel convicted and call Cam up and be like, "Hey, can we have a meeting and mm-hmm. like talk about this?" So. Uh, that being said, uh, let me put my money where my mouth is and say how we're actually gospel work really fits into that. Um, evangelism is something that we have not only had uh, more opportunities to do now; mm. those opportunities come up supernaturally. Uh, we mm. are all committed to going out into the community, doing I guess we could call extracurricular <laughs> activities or whatever. Mm, me and Marissa yeah. uh, auditioned for a play that's happening in Oslo, uh. and we both got parts, uh, oh. which was awesome. And so we're not not just building relationships just as a project, but we're making genuine friends there. Mm. We're learning more about Norwegian culture that way. Mm. And what's been awesome is the I don't even have to start mm-hmm. the gospel conversation. The gospel conversation starts when they say, "So why are you why, in Norway? What the heck are you mm. doing here?" Mm. And so I'm, I'm so not glad gonna, you asked. Thanks, God. <laughs> well, yeah. So they asked me why I'm in Norway. I'm not going to lie to them. Like I came to do this play. No, I, <laughs> I, I'll tell them why I'm in Norway. And so that's just a little example mm. of uh, how real gospel work happens um, in the midst of stuff yeah. that, on the face of it, doesn't look like church and we, work. Well, I mean, and we talked work. about that when we were when we were explaining and we ha- we're having dinners with people and talking about the mission and the vision. And we said like what we're doing looks a lot like 
normal life. Mm-hmm. Right? It looks like, and, and by design, we've talked about that in the context of like missional community and how does that work as an evangelistic strategy and as a church planning strategy. It looks a lot like regular life, mm-hmm. but it's, it's, uh, and it has to, but it's regular life with a missional evangelistic focus mm-hmm. for the purpose of seeing the kingdom grow. And the truth is we, you could do that anywhere and probably every Christian should be doing that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, the difference with us is God called us to a new place. And mm-hmm. we have we have to be able to get there and, and live there. So, so yeah, what a lot of what we do looks like regular old life. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, like Jacob, to to emphasize your point, it looks like regular life, and maybe it. it we hope that it's looking more and more like missional life ought to look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say. Um, well, before I launch into the thing, I want to say um, your example of like you and Motown doing the play. Um, I think is like an example like it's hard to connect how that um is a spiritual like how that's an effort that right. should be involved right. in this yeah, mission tell me, tell me what you guys are doing as missionaries well we got parts in a play yeah yeah um and that's where the advocate part of me wants yeah. to yeah. like just be cynical for the sake of argument and be yeah. like mm. what i didn't i didn't donate money for you guys to just go get parts yeah. in a play well, yeah. at the same time you could ask your pastor yeah. what are we paying you for and he's mm-hmm. like well my car payment and my and my I have to buy milk so my family <laughs> doesn't starve and Sure. Yeah, mm. that's true. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's, anyways, it's, it's a similar situation, but it's yeah, a little sorry. bit more pointed for us because it could look like what we're doing is um, spending a semester abroad mm-hmm. or or living a very um, uh, living out a very nice vacation. Like a, we're taking a six month vacation, right? Yeah, right. But so I would say we at this point, uh, like when you ask the question, it's kind of a weird time because I think we're in a transition. Mm-hmm. Like up to this point, we've. I would say something like our main focus has been being students Mm -hmm. and like for the five of us. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. Students of um, tons of things. So we're students of theology and leadership at school. So we're learning the Bible. Like we're learning the stuff that we should know as Christians who are going to go share Christianity. Um, We're students of language. We're students of culture. So like most of our efforts have been up to this point study efforts um and like the play for me um how i see that connecting is um we can learn as much about norwegian culture uh, as we want to from youtube videos or Mm -hmm. talking to people or textbooks um but there's nothing like uh, a week or two ago we were talking to Benta, mm-hmm. and I said um, something about throwing your kid into the pool oh, yeah. to teach him how to swim. <laughs> yeah. And yes, I Benta that. just kind of gave me like a she weird look, yeah. like she didn't exactly understand. And Cam picked up and explained what the metaphor or idiom or whatever yeah, meant. Said, we talked about being thrown in the deep end, and she looked yeah. at you like, she was like, I understand the words you just said, but what? Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's like nothing like learning the culture. Um, like when you get that face from someone. Mm-hmm. So I think like those, uh, like the play and those different efforts that we're doing, I'm in a gaming club. Um, <laughs> <laughs> those, awesome. yeah. those like set us up for those interactions where we run into a bump. And um, with Christians, it's definitely nice because, you know, they're graceful and kind to us. And Ben Ted's not a big deal when we hit that. Um, so it's nice to learn it in the um, Christian uh, community that we have, mm-hmm. but um, regardless, like a big thing that we have to do is learn the culture and actually understand how they think. And then, like the more important version of that is the um, mindsets that they have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those are like we talked about, like they're buried deep down to where they mm-hmm. don't even uh, verbalize them. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. they don't say them. It's just presuppositions. Yeah, yeah. One of the yeah. things you presuppose about culture, life, existence, what's your values, what's right and what's mm-hmm. wrong, what's yeah. good and bad. And there's some of the, most of that stuff never kind of comes to the surface. Yeah. But it's like the feeling you get when someone cuts in front of you in line at McDonald's, right? No one taught, well, I guess maybe they did teach you how to feel that way, but no, and someone goes, what's that? And you go, well, there is a moray that's being mm-hmm. violated here. <laughs> you don't do this because it implies that you're asserting your own, your own, uh, uh, value up ahead, above and ahead other of other people's value. Mm. Like that thing never is a thought. All it is is like a it's a reflex when somebody when somebody uh, does the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. And then how do you suss those out in a different culture? Like what are the yeah. things that make them wince and why? And they maybe not might not be able to tell you in words. Yeah, and a few like really valuable examples that we learned in our mission trips previously were um, 
that we can't assume the word Christian means the same thing. Mm -hmm. And we Mm -hmm. can't assume God means the same thing that we like in America, we can generally say those words and know that we have the same thing in mind. Um, So those are like really valuable cultural understanding things that we've gathered Mm -hmm. already, but there's definitely a lot more that we have to go Mm -hmm. and get. So that's a good clarifying point though, is that um, when I said that, just a few minutes ago that Norway is a uniquely secular place. Mm-hmm. I do not at all mean that like it is secular in the same way that you would say like, Oh, America is, has, yeah. is secular. America is not a uniquely secular place. Yeah. People are still have conceptions about God mm-hmm. and spirituality there that are like just pervasive in that culture. Interestingly yeah. in, in America, if we, Alan and I go to dinner, you can see women wearing a jewelry with a cross mm-hmm, on it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or people with a, a scripture verse on their t-shirt mm-hmm. and it's almost Easter and yeah. there's there are references to Easter all over the culture and you don't see any of that here. Yeah. I don't see Christian jewelry. I don't see no one's wearing you, yeah, cross necklaces mm, right. or C28 shirts or yeah. 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 And it, it's, no one carries a Bible <laughs> and seeing, seeing an occasional person carrying a Bible in, in, America is not a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, st- high school students might carry a Bible to school. Mm-hmm. Right? And th- have you seen a single Christian bumper sticker? No, no. Or Christian like Christian street pre- street preaching. Yeah, like only once, and it was just some lady yelling at people. But <laughs> not really. Like, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. I mean, all of that to say, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It yeah. was really bad. Um, I mean, all of that to say, I think that uh, I can un- I. I want to kind of more sympathize with like where that question's coming from. Mm -hmm. If we were in America and trying to do uh, some of the same things uh, that we're trying to do here in America, we would definitely skip a lot of these steps. Mm -hmm. Like entry, like, okay, well, I was born and raised in America for like my entire life. Mm -hmm. I don't really need to do We know the language. (laughs) We don't need need a residence permit. Yeah, I don't need to make sure I can stay in the country. (laughs) Yeah, pretty good. Right. (laughs) I love it. Or like even even down to like the building relationships thing. Yeah. Like if I've been in America for twenty years, like I hope I have some kind yeah. of relationship. At least you know how to you. We more or less know how to do it, mm. yeah. right? And navigate presuppositions. Right. It would be it would be a different conversation kind of if we were sent to like to somewhere in California or even somewhere in the United States. Right. Mm-hmm. We'd be like, okay, so we've we found a building to rent and we're getting started or or whatever. Mm. But there's all of that found the foundational stuff that yeah. uh, I think sometimes is not obviously missional, mm. but is is necessary. It's, mm-hmm. it's it's a part of the missional task that just that can't be left out. Yeah. And so I think that I think that's good. And I think it's a question that we should always have in our hearts and minds. Like, what are we doing? Because I think it could be easy to fall into a rhythm and routine. So we are we are trying to fall into rhythms and routines, mm-hmm. but ones that are mission focused and gospel oriented. Mm-hmm. And we could just fall into the routine right. of um, being Christians in Norway, mm-hmm. and we have not been called to live. We might call ordinary Christian life. I don't know how to say this without offending somebody, but we mm-hmm. we aren't called to pick up our American lives as Christians and churchgoers right. and start them in Oslo and do the same thing and and have mm. a job and a routine and be um, people who are Christians living in Oslo. God has called us to a place in order to uh, in order to join the harvest, right? And Jesus says, uh, "Pray that God would send workers into His harvest." He says that to His disciples. Pray that the, that the Lord of the harvest would send workers into His harvest. God's called us into the harvest, the harvest field, into the into the labor field of the evangelistic work that needs to be done. And so I think that that's. Um, I, I think there's n- there will never not be a time when we should keep that question like yeah. right close to our hearts, and and be asking ourselves all the time like, what are people paying us for? Yeah. Right. Well, and honestly, like we've we struggle with that question too. Right. Like Grace and I. I, all of us have had conversations like that where we're like, how, why am I spending Joy Piercy's money on groceries right now? Like, right. why is that an okay thing? Mm. Um, and there's like that battle and we've talked about it as a whole team a lot. Mm-hmm. And we have to do like, uh, we have to look up and remind ourselves like how it connects to the mission. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, like that's that's that job's on your shoulders yeah. mainly. So, well, that's I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's really easy to spend other people's money on yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, really yeah. easy to spend other people's money on yourselves, and um, just ask the government. In America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, okay, we're gonna do this now. Okay, now we're demonetized. No, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this episode brought to you by the U.S. government. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to we have to keep. Oh my gosh. 
we've got to keep that that question and that commitment, that conviction close to mm-hmm. our hearts. And that's and it's really helpful. So so thank you, orcharders, for never um, maybe putting it that that on the nose mm-hmm. and asking asking Pastor Bill. What are we paying them mm-hmm. for? Like, what is going? What are they doing with all of our money? Although that's totally valid and legitimate, and we need to always right. keep that close. And I can I can tell you for whatever my um, whatever my opinion counts for. I, I don't know how much, but um, I'm sort of the the spearhead of this whole thing. And I am not taking money from Word First Ministries. Like Whitney and I, we are fully separately employed, yeah. and we have don't have our our hands in that um, in that honey jar at all, except as overseers, right? Mm-hmm. So. So I can say that I witness what you guys are doing and what we're doing as a ministry and um, clearly see the the value of what it is that you're doing and you are living um, faithfully and you're living conservatively. And when it's easy to spend other people's money on yourselves, you are forgoing comforts and lug- not just luxuries, but also comforts. So you're forgoing luxuries and forgoing comforts mm. for the sake of frugality and efficiency for the mission that we have been sent here to do so that we can, I mean, that's one of the commitments we made to our supporters, right? Is that we Mm -hmm. are, we are heavily um, interested in minimizing expenses Mm -hmm. so that we can, so that we can stay here as, as long as possible. And I I think that you guys are doing that. We're fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so can I, do we have time for me to tell one more quick story? Okay, thanks. Yeah, of course Um, you do. (laughs) I remember you guys were here. So you got here sometime before you guys got here in the beginning of August. Mm -hmm. My family got here in the end of September. And we did our best best to put a budget together and we have all of our sort of corporate requirements and then all of our, our legal requirements and then just our moral and ethical requirements mm-hmm. to the family of God and to the church who sent us and, and our, our church family and all of that. Yeah. And so we did our best to put a, and it was a very shoestring budget, mm-hmm. but without compromising on what it actually takes to live. Right? Mm-hmm. We're not, I'm not asking you to eat grass because that would save on the way. Why don't you just go, uh, <laughs> don't you guys go graze? Like you don't need, you don't need all this bread. Just go graze. Um, but it was like your second week here. You're like, we didn't budget for laundry. How, yeah. do, mm. how do we do I remember that? that conversation? And I was like, well, that comes out of incidentals. I mean, each of you had a, has a very, very meager incidentals budget mm-hmm. in mm. case you need a pair of shoes, like a specific thing that we can't specifically budget for, yeah. but you, mm-hmm. you need shoes and you're going to need a new pair of undies and bl- like stuff is going to happen that you can't specific, can't specifically predict, but you know, it's going to be something. Anyways, you have a very small incidentals budget. Uh, well, that comes out of incidentals. We've got to figure that out. Okay. We'll figure it out. Hey, we had to get special transportation because you guys had to go to COVID hotels. We had to yep. go to a COVID mm-hmm. hotel when we got here and now we can't just take the bus back. Like what do we do? And we had to figure out where that goes. And you all have been willing to do crazy things like Alan live on your couch for a month mm-hmm. and live mm-hmm. together in, in the student housing village, which is nice, but it is quaint. Cramped. It is, yeah, mm-hmm. it is. <laughs> for three people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's and always I, a party. It's always a party. <laughs> One, two. It's always a party because you're never not touching somebody. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I just mean on account of having the closeness of quarters, Jacob. Yes, true. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Um, no, it just sounds horrible. Just okay. Sound, yeah. <laughs> All I was saying, what I went to say was meant to give you guys a little bit of a, a compliment and to say from my perspective, I see the ways that you are willing to um, forego your own comforts and forego what yeah. some of us would call necessities in order to advance the mission, in order to not be so easy in order to not so easily spend other people's money on yourself. And I, that I, that's an, uh, that's um, an indication of your faithfulness. And I really admire that. And I can tell the people back home, if that's one of the things that you're wondering in, uh, in California and the United States as someone who sent these young people to come and be ministers, then you can have a confidence and they can have a clean conscience that they're doing that well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah, that was, yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Where are we going for lunch? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, and I think uh, just like uh, trying to take myself out of the equation, not to brag on the team so hard, but I feel like if any of one of us like was like that, was kind of like, oh, hey, where are we going for lunch? Like, mm-hmm. let's go out to eat all the time and stuff, and and just spend Joy Piercy's money. But mm. uh, I feel like you know, the way that our team is like set up and the way that we trust each other, like we would totally like hold each other accountable Mm -hmm. to that. And, um, I feel like, like if I definitely wasn't here, like looking at this whole team, I would totally like trust that team, Mm -hmm. like with the money. And so that's a dangerous uh, place to be like being mm -hmm. worthy of trust 
And then mm. like you can be, you can find comfort in that and then become unworthy of trust. Mm. So we just can't let well, that happen. And that was the the next point. It yeah, was yeah, literally, sorry. no, sorry, it, I no, you're fine. You. It was literally just <laughs> like right about to come out. I totally feel the pressure yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. do not take it lightly at all that people have invested mm. in pitches that we made to them, a vision that we quote unquote sold them on. I hate using that word, but I'm mm. going to, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think to hit the nail on the head, what people yeah. invested in were eternal outcomes. Right. Mm-hmm. They, right. Did, they didn't invest in your food and your transportation mm-hmm. and your clothing, although those are necessary. They in, invested in work to be done in Norway so that eternal souls would be saved from mm-hmm. hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're, they're very, there's a lot of curiosity about what are they doing and is that happening right. yet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the way that looks in the real world is... Mm-hmm. I bought broccoli today and, uh, <laughs> you know, and ground pork was, ha- was in the 50% off bin. So the way that, so the way that you invest, like obviously, but you can't put a nickel in a, in a save a soul machine. Right. The way mm-hmm. that, the way that it works out is by, uh, people on mission doing what look to be very ordinary things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, thank you. And so, and let uh, me extend before we wrap. Were you wrapping up? Uh, not really. Okay, then never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm going like, to say go it ahead, anyways. Yeah. But I was, uh, <laughs> uh, extend an invitation again. I say this to everyone and all of our supporters and all of our friends and people who are praying for us, who are paying for the uh, mission to happen. Um, come visit us. Yes, please. Like, come visit mm-hmm. us. But pack a lunch because food's expensive. Yes. <laughs> Goodness. I can teach you how to make a mutt pocket. A mutt pocket. Yeah. Good. We're going to we'll do that. Um, but please come and visit. And I'm, and I'm learning more and more. Like, so part of me wants to sort of show off my, my church family and be like, Hey, here, like, mm. and, and, uh, and, and just have them here. But I also, like, I'm realizing more and more and more how much we have to learn from the Christians here. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we, right. I want some of this to rub off on all of us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For, for us to share their wisdom and, and their experiences and see what's going mm-hmm. on here, because it might also be easy to, th- to feel like, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but something like, something like, well, we, we're going to go to Norway because we can teach these people what needs to be done. We can, right. we're going to we show them how to do it right. We're going to show them how to do it right. We've got, <laughs> and really we just have some information and strategy that's like, no, that's really not what's going on. They, they yeah. need help in the harvest. Right, there's well, labor not, <laughs> to be done. They they need help. Not not so much instruction. <laughs> well, not so, only yeah. were we like intentionally sensitive about that yeah. in America, like mm-hmm. coming over here, like okay, we don't want to come in and just knock the door down and like let me show you how to do it right. Right, the cavalry's we, arrived. Mm-hmm. So not mm-hmm. only were we already sensitive of that, like not to be that way. I, I it's been so much more real and mm-hmm. experiential here that it is so not that way. It's so mm-hmm. not we that way. Yeah. have so much to learn from the Norwegians. I yeah. uh, am particularly excited to uh, dive into those topics uh, mm-hmm. on later episodes of the podcast. Oh, yeah. Um, but Cam, you're exactly right. Like we have so much to learn mm. from the Norwegians. I don't say that in a polite way. It's mm. like, nope, like I wish I could fly all of America mm. yeah. out here to like watch the how mm. our church does it. Not because of us, right. but how the Norwegians have been doing mm. it. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, fantastic. There's so much that they can learn. Oh, yeah. Uh, so much that they Americans can yeah. learn from the Norwegians mm. here. Mm. So I... I think that just about does it for uh, today. Pastor Bill, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank mm. you for lending us your dad. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was easy. I promised that he would do it before he even knew. So <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. It's really good to see you guys again. So thank you, thank you for the good work you're doing. I want to encourage you to continue to do that good work, even when you, I imagine there are going to be times when the rewards are not going to be uh, immediate. Mm-hmm. So know that you're doing good work and that God will bless the work you're doing. And you got a team of people at home praying for you. Mm-hmm. And we love you and, and appreciate you. Yeah. We love, we love you, too, you back. Man. Thanks. Oh. Yeah. Hey. We're not going to talk about you. <laughs> not right no. now. Whatever. Well, that means, uh, that means so much to us. That means the world, really, to have that encouragement. Because mm-hmm. um, it does feel that way sometimes. And mm-hmm. so this is uh, now me wrapping up. Yeah. Uh, so everyone who <laughs> is listening to this uh, back in California, 
Uh, we love you guys. We hope we got to speak into some of your questions and some of the things you've been wondering. Um, one of the most important things you can do is, uh, besides like and sharing and subscribing <laughs> to this channel, <laughs> is reach out to us. Yeah. Send us messages. Mm -hmm. uh, comment on our Facebook stuff. Ask us how we're doing. We love, I know, speaking for myself and for them, uh, we <laughs> love <laughs> hearing from people from the United States. It's yeah. very encouraging to hear that you're praying for us and that you want to hear from us. So reach out to us. We'd love mm -hmm. to hear from you. And we will see you again next week on Word First Radio. God bless. Thank you for watching this episode of Word First Radio. If you like the podcast, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to learn more about Word First and how you can support the ministry spiritually and financially, check out the links in the description below. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Word First Radio, and we'll see you again next week. God bless. God bless.